The Nivik also Nivs, Nivki, or Gilek, ethnonym, Nivshi, language, Nivu Nivixgu are an indigenous ethnic group inhabiting the northern half of Sakhalin Island and the region of the Amur River estuary in Russia's Kavavos Krai. Nivik were traditionally fishermen, hunters, and dog breeders. They were semi-nomadic, living near the coasts in the summer and wintering inland along streams and rivers to catch salmon. The land the Nivik inhabit is characterized as taiga forest with cold snow-laden winters and mild summers with sparse tree cover. The Nivik are believed to be the original inhabitants of the region, and to derive from a proposed Neolithic people that migrated from the Transbaikal region during the late Pleistocene. The Nivik suffered heavily from foreign influences, the first of which was the migration of the Tungusic peoples. Later, Qing China forced the Nivik to pay tribute to them. In the 1850s to 1860s, Cossacks of the Russian Empire annexed and colonized Nivik lands, where they are a small, often neglected, minority today. Today, the Nivik live in Russian style housing, and with the overfishing and pollution of the streams and seas, they have adopted many foods from Russian cuisine. The Nivik practice shamanism, which is important for the Winter Bear Festival, though some have converted to Russian Orthodoxy. As of the 2002 Russian Federation census, 5,287 Nivik exist. Most speak Russian today, and about 10% speak their indigenous Nivik language. Nivik is considered a language isolate, although it is grouped, for convenience, with the Paleo Siberian languages. The Nivik language is divided into four dialects. Etymology Nivik plural nivku, an endonym, means person in the Nivik language. They may also be referred to as Nivki in 1920s Western literature, due to romanization of the Russian term nivhai, which is the plural of niv, nivik. In the 17th and 18th centuries, Russian explorers first termed the group Gilyak, also Gilyaks or Gilyatsky. The etymology of the name Gilyak is disputed by linguists, with some believing the name originated from an exonym given to the Nivs by a nearby Tungusic group. Other scholars believe that Gilyak derives from Kyle, another nearby Tungusic group that the Russians had mistakenly named Nivs. Topic: <inaudible> Origins. <inaudible> the origins of the Nivik are hard to discern from current archaeological research. Their subsistence by fishing and coastal sea mammal hunting is very similar to the Koryak and Itelman on the Kamchatka Peninsula. The rigging of dog sleds is also similar to these chukotko kamchatkan groups. Spiritual beliefs are similar to those of the northwest coast Indians of North America, whose ancestors migrated from this area. The Nivik are physically and genetically different from the surrounding peoples, and scholars believe they are the indigenous inhabitants of the area. The current archaeological model suggests that a sub-Arctic technological culture originating from the Transbaikal region, termed the Microlithic culture, migrated across Siberia and populated the Amur and Sakhalin region during the late Pleistocene, perhaps earlier. Scientists believe that people of this microlithic small tool culture were the first to migrate eastward into the Americas. The Microlithic culture was technologically adept in the harsh climate of Siberia during the last ice age. After the ice receded, Tungusic peoples from the south pressed into the warmer northern areas, soon dominating the settled peoples. The Nivik are considered the last surviving ethnic group able to adapt to the warmer climate and not be assimilated or squeezed out by the newcomers, hence the Nivik isolate language. The earliest archaeological radiocarbon dating for northern Sakhalin as of 2004 is the Neolithic Age Imchin Site 2, dated at 4950-4570 BCE near the Tym River estuary on the west coast. Topic: <laughs> Population genetics. Topic: <laughs> Y chromosomal DNA haplogroups. Lel et al. 2002 tested a sample of 17 Nivik males and found that six of them belonged to haplogroup CM48, six of them belonged to haplogroup PM45 XQM3, RM17, two of them belonged to haplogroup CM130 XM48, two of them belonged to haplogroup KM9 XO1AM119, O2M122, NTAT, PM 
45, and one of them belonged to haplogroup O1 a M119. Tajima et al. 2004 tested a sample of 21 NIVIC males and found that eight of them belonged to haplogroup CM217, a haplogroup which is also common among Koryaks, Itelmans, Yukagers, Tungusic peoples, and Mongols. Six of them belonged to haplogroup KM9 XO2M122, O1 a M119, PP27, four of them belonged to haplogroup PP27 XR1A1 SRY 10831.2, two of them belonged to haplogroup R1A1 SRY 10831.2, and one of them belonged to haplogroup BTSRY 10831.1 XCRPS4 Y711, de Yap, KM9. According to the abstract for a doctoral dissertation by Vladimir Nikolaevich Kharkov, a sample of 52 NIVs Nivhai from Sakhalin Oblast, Sahalinska Oblast contained the following Y-DNA haplogroups, 71% C3-M217, XC3CM77, M86, C3DM407, 7.7% O3A-M324, XO3A3CM134, 7.7% M84, XO3A3CM134, 7.7% QM242, XQ1A3M346, 5.8% DM174, 3.8% OM175, XO2P31, O3M122, 1.9% O2P31, and 1.9% N1C1M46, M178 Topic. Mitochondrial DNA haplogroups Toroni et al. reported collecting blood samples from 57 unrelated and unhybridized Nivik individuals living in Ribnowsk and Nekrasovka villages in northern Sakhalin Island. According to Starokovskaya et al. 2005 and Burmasheva et al. 2005, the members of this sample of NIVs belong to haplogroup Y Topic: 64.9% haplogroup D percent haplogroup G1 Topic: 5.3% and haplogroup M X C Z D G 157. 1.8% in another sample of NIVs, possibly those living on the continent. Although there appears to be an error in the original text, Burmasheva et al. 2005 have found the following mtDNA haplogroups, 67.3% haplogroup Y, 25.5% haplogroup G, 3.6% haplogroup D, 1.8% haplogroup M, X, C, Z, D, G, and 1.8% haplogroup N or R, X, A, B, F, Y. According to Duggan et al., 2013, the members of a sample of 38 NIVs collected in northern Sakhalin belong to haplogroup Y1A 2538. 65.8% haplogroup D4 M2 26.3% and haplogroup G1B 3/38 equals 7.9%. One identical Y1A haplotype was shared by 8 Nivik individuals, another Y1A haplotype was shared by 6 Nivik individuals, and two other Y1A haplotypes were shared by 3 Nivik individuals each, indicating a low genetic diversity of this population. Likewise, one identical D4M2 haplotype was shared by four Nivik individuals, another D4M2 haplotype was shared by two Nivik individuals, and a third D4M2 haplotype was shared by two or three Nivik individuals and a Northeast Yakut individual. 
The authors also have found haplogroup Y1A in 13.3% of Berezovka Evans, 12.5% of Tamir Evenks, 6.5% of Udigis, 2.6% of Kamchatka Evans, and 2.3% of Central Yakuts, and they have noted that other studies have reported finding this haplogroup in high frequency in the Ulchi and Negadal, in 9% to 10% of Koryaks and Eastern Evenks, as well as in low frequency in central and Vilui Yakuts. Besides the NIVs, the authors also have found mtDNA that belongs to haplogroup D4M2 in 8.7% Sakura or Evans, 3.7% Tompo Evans, and 3.1% Northeast Yakuts, with the Northeast Yakut individual sharing an identical haplotype with several of the NIVs. The authors have noted that mtDNA sequences that belong to the same branch of haplogroup D have been found in Evenks, Evens, Yukajers, and South Siberian Buryats and Turkic speakers, and another study has reported one instance of D4M2 in a sample of 154 dolgans. As for G1B, the other mtDNA haplogroup found among NIVs, Duggan et al., 2013, also have found it in their samples of Kamchatka Evens. Topic: 15.4% Koryaks 2 13.3% Yukajers 2 20ths. Topic: 10.0% Iangra Evenks 2 21sts. 9.5% and Tompo Evans 127th equals 3.7% and they have cited Starakovskaya et al. 2005 as evidence for their statement that haplogroup G1 is also common in the negatal. Topic: History The Sakhalin Nivs populated the island during the late Pleistocene period when the island was connected to the continent of Asia via the exposed Strait of Tartary. When the Ice Age receded, the oceans rose and the Nivik were split into two groups. The earliest mention of the Nivik in history is believed to be a 12th century Chinese chronicle, referring to a people called Jilyemi Chinese, Jilaimi who were in contact with the Mongol rulers of Yuan China. In 1643, Vasily Poyarkov was the first Russian to write of the Nivik, calling them Galiak, a Tungus exonym, by which they would be referred until the 1920s. Nivik lands extended along the northern coast of Manchuria from the Russian fortress at Tugor Bay eastward to the mouth of the Amur River at Nikolaevsk, then south through the Strait of Tartary as far as de Castries Bay. Formerly their territories had extended westwards at least as far as the Uda River and the Shantar Islands until pushed out by the Manchus and, later, the Russians. For many centuries, the Nivik were tributary to the Manchus. After the Treaty of Nerchinsk in 1689, they functioned as intermediaries between the Russians, Manchu and Japanese, also with the Ainu who were vassals of the Japanese. Early contact with the southern Sakhalin Ainu was generally hostile, although trade between the two was apparent. The Nivik suffered severely from the Cossack conquest and imposition of the Tsarist Russians, they called the latter Kinnersh devils. The Russian Empire gained complete control over Nivik lands after the 1858 Treaty of Igun and the 1860 Convention of Peking. The Russians established a penal colony on Sakhalin, which operated from 1857 to 1906. They transported numerous Russian criminal and political exiles there, including Lev Sternberg, an important early ethnographer of the Nivik. The Nivik were soon outnumbered, they were sometimes employed as prison guards and to track escaped convicts. The Nivik suffered epidemics of smallpox, plague, and influenza, brought by the foreign immigrants and spread in the crowded, unsanitary prison environment. Though the Empire of Japan never controlled the northern part of Sakhalin, Japan and Russia jointly ruled the island as part of the 1855 Treaty of Shimoda. From the 1875 Treaty of St. Petersburg until the 1905 Treaty of Portsmouth, Russia governed all of Sakhalin. From 1905 to 1945, Sakhalin was partitioned between Russia and Japan along the 50th N parallel. Russia allowed Japanese entrepreneur fishermen in Nivik lands from the 1880s until their 1948 expulsion. The Russian Priamor Governor Generalship had difficulty finding Russian labor and allowed Japanese and Nivik fishermen to develop the area, though they were heavily taxed. 
Russian authorities prevented the Nivik from fishing in prior coastal and river systems via bans and high taxes from cached fish. The first of many incidents of over-exploitation of fisheries by the Japanese and latter the Russians on the Tartar Strait and Lower Amur occurred in 1898. It drove many Nivik peoples into starvation or they had to import expensive foreign, Russian, foods. Russia underwent the October Revolution forming the Soviet Union in 1922. The new government altered prior Russian imperial policies towards the Nivik that were in line with communist ideology. Soviet officials embraced the autonym Nivik to replace the old term Gilyak, as a hallmark for new native self-determination. A brief autonomous okrug was created for the Nivik. The government granted them extensive fishing rights, which were not rescinded until the 1960s. But, other Soviet policies proved devastating. The Nivik were forced into mass agricultural and industrial labor collectives called Kolkhoz. Nivik fishermen were difficult to convert to agricultural practices because of their belief that plowing the earth was a sin. The Nivik were soon working and living as a second class minority group among the massive Russian labor force. These collectives irrevocably altered the lifestyle of the Nivik. The traditional hunter gatherer lifestyle disappeared. Soviet authorities showcased the Nivik as a model nation for a culture quickly transforming from the Neolithic to a socialist industrial model. They banned the use of the Nivik language from schools and the public square. The Russian language was mandated and Russification of the Nivik accelerated. Many Nivik stories, beliefs, and clan ties were forgotten by new generations. From 1945 to 1948, many Nivik, as well as half of the Oryx and all of the Sakhalin Ainu, who had been living under Japanese jurisdiction in the southern half of Sakhalin, were forced to move to Japan along with the ethnic Japanese settlers. Many indigenous people would later return to the area. Chunar Taksami, an anthropologist, is considered the first modern Nivik literary figure and supporter of Siberian rights. In the post-Soviet Russian Commonwealth of Nations, the Nivik have fared better than the Ainu or the Itelmans, but worse than the Chukchi or the Tuvans. The Soviet government in 1962 resettled many of the Nivik into fewer, denser settlements, such that Sakhalin settlements had been reduced from 82 to 13 by 1986. This relocation was accomplished via the Soviet collectives that the Nivik had become so dependent on. The closure of state-funded amenities such as a school or electricity generator prompted citizenry to move into government-preferred settlements. With the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, the Kolkhoz collectives were abandoned. The Nivik were dependent on the state-funded collectives, and with their dissolution, rapid economic hardship ensued for the already poor populace. At present, the Nivik living in the north of Sakhalin see their future threatened by the giant offshore oil extraction projects known as Sakhalin I and Sakhalin II, operated by foreign western firms. Since January 2005, the Nivik, led by their elected leader Alexei Lomonzo, have engaged in non-violent protest actions, demanding an independent ethnological assessment of Shell's and Exxon's plans. Solidarity actions have been staged in Moscow, New York City and later in Berlin. The monthly Nivik newspaper, Nivik DIF, established in 1990, is published using the West Sakhalin dialect and is headquartered in the village of Nekrasovka. Society Village life The Nivik were semi-sedentary hunter-gatherers having summer and winter settlements. Nivik villages consisted of three to four households shared by several families with larger villages rare, mostly located on the Amur estuary. Households were shared for reasons of community and survival during the harsh cold winters. Villages would last for several decades but were susceptible to floods and sometimes vanished such as the many wiped out during the devastating Amur floods of 1915 and 1968. Often households contained families that were not related. The village was usually composed of people from two to eight different clans, four being standard. In the late fall, able bodied Nivik men would leave the villages to hunt for game in the surrounding hunting grounds, whereas women would gather foods from the forests. Nivik would move to winter settlements near rivers to survive the harsh snows and catch salmon spawning. See list of Nivik settlements. The Nivik were very hospitable, such that when the Nanai located upstream on the Amur when faced with hard times would often visit or stay in Nivik villages. Topic. Clan 
Nivik clans were a group of people united by marriage ties, a common derived deity, arranging marriages, and responsible for group dispute resolution. The clan is divided into three exogamous sub-clans. A clan would cooperate with other members on hunts and fishing when away from the village. A Nivik clan believed they had one common Akmalk or IMGI, one fire, one mountain man, one bear, one devil, one tea cousin, ransom, or clan penalty, and one sin. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Marriage. Marriage tended to be exogamic, unlike many Paleo-Siberian groups. Although within the clan, marriage is endogamic, while sub-clans are exogamic. Nivik marriage customs were very complicated and controlled by the clan. Cross-cousin marriage seems to be the original custom with the clan a latter necessity when the clan was unable to marry individuals without breaking taboo. The bride price was probably introduced by the Neo-Siberians. The dowry was shared by the clan. The number of men generally exceeded the number of women. It was hard to gain wives, as they were few and expensive. This would lead to the wealthier men having more than one wife and the poor men without. Religion Nivka's traditional religion was based on animist beliefs, especially via shamanism, before colonial Russians made efforts to convert the population to Eastern Orthodox Christianity. Nivik animists believe the island of Sakhalin is a giant beast lying on its belly with the trees of the island as its hair. When the beast is upset, it awakens and trembles the earth causing earthquakes. Nivik have a pantheon of vaguely defined gods YZ, YZNG, that presided over the mountains, rivers, seas and sky. Nivkas have extensive folklore, songs, and mythos of how humans and the universe were created, and of how fantastic heroes, spirits and beasts battled with each other in ancient times. Some Nivs have converted to Russian Orthodoxy or other religions, though many still practice traditional beliefs. Fire is especially venerated. It is the symbol of the unity of the clan. Fire is considered a deity of their ancestors, protecting them from evil spirits and guarding their clan from harm. An open flame would be fed a leaf of tobacco, spices, or a tipple of vodka in order to please the spirits for protection. Nivs would also frequently offer items to the deities by feeding. The sea would be fed an item of importance in order that the sea god protect the travelers. Topic. Shamanism. Shaman's cham main role was in diagnosing and curing disease for the Nivik. The rare shamans typically wore an elaborate coat with a belt often made of metal. Remedies composed of plant and sometimes animal matter were employed to cure sickness. Talismans were used or offered to patients to prevent sickness. Shamans additionally functioned as a conduit to combat and ward off evil spirits that cause death. A shaman's services usually were compensated with goods, quarters and food. Topic. Bear festival Nivik shamans also presided over the bear festival, a traditional holiday celebrated between January and February depending on the clan. Bears were captured and raised in a corral for several years by local women, treating the bear like a child. The bear was considered a sacred earthly manifestation of Nivik ancestors and the gods in bear form see bear worship. During the festival, the bear would be dressed in a specially made ceremonial costume. It would be offered a banquet to take back to the realm of gods to show benevolence upon the clans. After the banquet, the bear would be sacrificed and eaten in an elaborate religious ceremony. Often dogs were sacrificed as well. The bear's spirit returned to the gods of the mountain happy and would then reward the Nivik with bountiful forests. The festival typically would be arranged by relatives to honor the death of a kinsman. Generally, the Bear Festival was an inter-clan ceremony where a clan of wife-takers restored ties with a clan of wife-givers upon the broken link of the kinsman's death. The Bear Festival was suppressed during Soviet occupation though the festival has had a modest revival since the decline of Soviet Union, albeit as a cultural instead of religious ceremony. A very similar ceremony, Iomanti, is practiced by the Ainu people of Japan. Topic. Environment. The Russian Far East has a cold and harsh climate. 
In the fish rich Amur River estuary in the districts of Nixni Amruski and Taktingski, winters have high winds and heavy snows with mid winter usually averaging from 28 to 20 degrees Celsius. Minus 18 to minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit. Summers are wet and moderately warm ranging between 16 and 20 degrees Celsius 61 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The area's biome is characterized as taiga and evergreen coniferous forests consisting of larch, yew, birch, maple, lilac, honeysuckle, and extensive low-lying swamp grasses. Higher elevations have spruce, fir, ash, lime, walnut and mountain tops have cedar and lichens. Bears, foxes, sables, hares, Siberian tigers, elks, grouse, and deer typical near the Amur outlet which usually floods during the rainy season. Northern Sakhalin is harsher ecologically with mostly taiga. Winters are longer, with a mean temperature of minus 19 degrees Celsius minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit. However short summers are warmer averaging 15 degrees Celsius 59 degrees Fahrenheit due to warmer Pacific Ocean currents moving around the island. Heavy snows blanket the island of Sakhalin YH Mif in Nivik during winter, due to monsoon winds blowing from Siberia, drawing humidity as they pass over the Sea of Okhotsk, Sea of Japan, and the Strait of Tartary. Barren tundra dominates the north, with sparse trees such as larch, birch and various grasses, while moving southward, spruce and fir are seen. Bears, foxes, otters, lynx, and reindeer are common wildlife. The island's major rivers are the Tym and Peroni, rich in fish especially salmon. Before Russian colonization, Nivik villages could be found on these rivers approximately every 5 km. The Strait of Tartary is currently only 20 km 12 miles wide and is shallow enough that the divide is covered by an ice bridge during the winter that can be traversed by foot or dog sled. At the glacial maximum of the Ice Age, sea levels were 100 meters 330 feet lower than they are today. The Eurasia continent was connected to Sakhalin via the Strait of Tatar and Hokkaido via the Soya Strait of which humans migrated. This connection explains the similarities of trees, plants, and animals including now extinct mammoths. The receding ice age warmed the area allowing greater tree cover and wildlife, thus new resources for the Nivs to exploit. The opening of the Soya and then the shallower Strait of Tartary allowed warm Pacific currents to bathe the island and the lower Amur River. Topic. Technology Topic. Dwellings Nivs lived in two types of self-built winter dwellings. Most ancient of these was the RYV or two. The dwelling was a round dugout about 7.5 meters 23 feet in diameter, shored up by wooden poles and covered with packed dirt and grass. The RYV had a fireplace in the center and a smoke hole for light and smoke escape. The other type of dwelling used for winter is the Chad RYV similar to the Nanai Dio which was modeled after Manchurian and Chinese dwellings of the Amur. The Chad RYV were one-room structures with a gable roof and a khan Korean furnace for heating. A nearby shed held sledges, skis, boats, and dogs. Topic. Clothing. Nivs traditionally wore robes SKIY for men, hucked for women having three buttons, fastened on the left side of the body. Winter garments were made of skins from fish, seal, sable, and furs from otter, lynx, fox, and dog. Women's hucked extended below the knee and were light multicolored with intricate embroideries and various ornaments sewed on the sleeves, collar and hem. Ornaments were coins, bells, or beads made of wood, glass, or metal mostly originating from Manchurian and Chinese traders. Men's SKIY were darker colored, shorter, and had pockets built into the sleeves. Men's clothing were less elaborate with ornaments on the sleeve and left lapel. Men would also wear a loose kilt called a cosque when hunting or traveling on dog sled. Boots were made of fish, seal, or deerskin, being very watertight. Fur hats hawk were worn in winter, with the furry tails and ears of the animals used often adorning the back and crown of the hat. Summer hats HIV hawk were conical made from birch bark. After Soviet collectivization, Nivik mostly wear mass-produced Western clothing, but traditional clothing is worn for holidays and cultural events. Topic. Diet The Nivik had a diverse diet being semi-sedentary before colonization. 
Fish was the main source of food for the Nivik, including pink, Pacific, and chum salmon as well as trout, red-eye, burbot and pike found in rivers and streams. Salt water fishing provided saffron cod, flatfish, and marine goby caught in the littoral coasts of the Strait of Tartary, Sea of Okhotsk, and the Pacific Ocean, though overfishing by Russian and Japanese trawlers have depleted many of these fish stocks. Additionally, industrial pollution such as phenols and heavy metals in the Amur River have devastated fish stocks and damaged the soil of the estuaries. A traditional preservation process called eucola, involving slicing the fish in a particular way and drying the strips by hanging them in the frigid air, without salt, was used before foreign influences. The preservation process created a lot of dried fish waste, unpalatable for human consumption but utilized for dog food. Pulverizing dried fish and mixing it with fish skins, water, seal fat, and berries until the mixture had a sour cream consistency is a favorite Nivik dish called mos. Nivs would hunt seal, larha, reind, reabon, sea lions, duck, sable, and otters. They would gather various berries, wild leeks, lillibulbs, and nuts. Contacts with the Chinese, Manchu, and Japanese from the 12th century on introduced new foods incorporated in the Nivs diet such as salt, sugar, rice, millet, legumes and tea. Russian 19th century colonization introduced flour, bread, potatoes, vodka, tobacco, butter, canned vegetables and fruits, and other meats. Topic famous Nivs Vladimir Sangi, Russian writer Lyudmila Gashilova, director of the Institute of the North Chunar Taksami, ethnographer Topic See also list of Nivik settlements Ainu Itelman Koryaks Chukchis Topic Notes Topic References Bassett, Elizabeth Retrieved November 2007 Gileak, Nivik, Culture, Minnesota State University, Mankato, E-Museum Black, Lydia 1973 Nivik, Gileak of Sakhalin and the Lower Amur. Arctic Anthropology. Volume 10 No. 1, 110 p. ISSN 0066-6939 Chausenay, Valerie Native Cultures of Alaska and Siberia. Arctic Studies Center. Washington, D.C. 112 p. ISBN 1-56098-661-1 Chaplitska, Maria Antonina and Collins, David The Collected Works of M. A. Chaplitska, 1st Edition. Routledgekerzen, 1600p. ISBN 0-7007-1001-9 Fitzhugh, William, and Der Bruy 1999, Ainu, Spirit of a Northern People. Washington, D.C., Arctic Studies Center, National Museum of Natural History, Smithsonian Institution and University of Washington Press, 415p. ISBN 0-9673429-0-2 Friedrich and Diamond 1994 Encyclopedia of World Cultures, Russia and Eurasia China. Volume 6. G. K. Hall & Company. Boston, Massachusetts. ISBN 0-8161-1810-8 Gall, Timothy L. 1998 Worldmark Encyclopedia of Cultures and Daily Life, NIVS. Detroit, Michigan, Gale Research Inc. 2100p. ISBN 0-7876-0552-2 Kamenaga, Izuki 2007 Maritime History and Imperiology Japan's Northern Fisheries and the Primor Governor Generalship. Slavic Research Center Kolga, Margus 2001 The Red Book of the Peoples of the Russian Empire. NGO Red Book. Tallinn, Estonia 399p ISBN 9985-9369-2-2 Kuzmin, Vasilevsky, Gorbanov, Burr, Joel, Orlova Shubina 2004 Chronology of Prehistoric Cultural Complexes of Sakhalin Island. Radio Carbon, Vol. 46. NR. 1. University of Arizona ISSN 0033-8222 Madison, Johanna 2001 Facts About the World's Languages. New England Publishing, 896p. ISBN 0-8242-0970-2 Moat, Victor L. Siberia, Worlds Apart. Boulder, Colorado, Westview Press, 258p. ISBN 0-8133-1298-1 Reed, Anna The Shaman's Coat, A Native History of Siberia. New York, New York, Walker & Company, 224p. ISBN 0-8027-1399-8 Shiraishi, Hidetoshi, 2006 Chapter 1, Topics in Nivik Phonology, University of Groningen, Adobe Acrobat Asterisk, PDF Document, Sternberg, Lev Yakovlevich and Bruce Grant, 1999 The Social Organization of the Gileak. 
New York, American Museum of Natural History. Seattle, University of Washington Press 280p. ISBN 0-295-97799-X Smoliak, A. V. Traditional Principles of Natural Resources Use Among Indigenous Peoples of the Lower Amur River. Journal of Legal Pluralism Num. 46 ISSN 0732-9113 Further reading Chekhov, Anton Pavlovich, and Brian Reeve, 1993 A Journey to Sakhalin. Cambridge, Ian Faulkner. ISBN 1-85763-005-X Grant, Bruce in the Soviet House of Culture. Princeton, New Jersey, Princeton University Press. ISBN 0-691-03722-1 Taksami, C. H. M. Nivki, Savremeno Kazaistvo, Kultura i b y t, The Nivs, Contemporary Economy, Culture, and Way of Life. In Russian, Leningrad, Naka. Topic. External links The NIVs from the Red Book Norwegian Polar Institute article Sound materials of the Nivik language The world's largest sound archive of the Nivik language on the web Shell oil on Sakhalin, putting profits before people and the environment